Hi everyone, my name is Michaela and I studied politics and international relations at the University of Aberdeen and today I'll take you around the campus. It's a lovely autumnal day, so we'll start off in the heart of the campus. This is what you probably have seen quite a lot in across, you know, all of our prospectuses and all of our marketing materials, the King's College. Um, so it's the oldest part of the university. The university itself was founded in 1495, so it's actually the third oldest in Scotland and it's fifth oldest in the entire English speaking world. So we've been around for quite a while and so has the building. The oldest part of the whole campus is actually the chapel which you can see just sort of attached to the tower um, and the chapel is still a functioning chapel. There are weddings happening, there are uh, frequent uh, masses and you know so it's an actual functioning chapel. Um, and it's lovely and our choir often practices there as well so you might find yourself just walking around and listening to the lovely music coming from the chapel. Um, you can see in front of the chapel there there's a green tomb which is the tomb of Archbishop of Elphinstone. He was one of the founders of the university and when he died they wanted to honour him in like a really grand way and they decided to commission this lovely tomb. Um, well, when it arrived, you know, they brought it over to campus and they were, you know, there was celebration and everything. Um, and then they were fixing to bring it inside. And what they discovered was that actually the door to the chapel was too narrow and they couldn't get the tomb through the door. So what they ended up doing, you know, classic problem solving of the 15th century, they just left it outside for eternity. So that's how the poor fella ended up um, outside. We're now going to take a walk through the actual building. So what you might think is, you know, this is just a pretty building. I'm never going to actually study here or anything like that. Um, the thing is, you will spend a lot of your time here, especially in your first and second year, you know, when you have those like big lectures. There are lecture theatres in this building where you will spend your time and you will have your lectures. We also actually have three libraries on this campus. We have one other library at our medical campus, but three are on this campus. And one is hidden somewhere in this building. Uh, don't know exactly where because it is a secret divinity library that is only open to divinity students. So during my entire career at the university, I never actually got to see it. I just know it's somewhere in that area. Um, yeah, so if you end up being friends with the Divinity student, I would definitely recommend you swipe their student card and try to get in because uh, it properly looks like Harry Potter. Um, and a lot of the campus does look like Harry Potter, you might have noticed. Um, and it is lovely and you know when you're taking your pictures ar around here during graduation, it just really adds to the mystique of the campus. So right now we're standing in King's Quad um, named aptly because it's a quad and it's in the King's Building. Um, as I said, there are lecture theatres all around. So to that side, yeah, you will see those big windows. Those are all lecture theatres, but there are also smaller rooms which are used for tutorials. Behind me, um, straight up, is the conference centre where um, you will have things like, you know, during our open days, those are frequently used. You will also have like actual conferences happening um, and you can have your wedding reception there as well if you're planning on that. So uh, we will move closer to there and uh, also on this side, you can see the back of the chapel. So this is where you would usually enter. If you're interested, you know, at any point visiting the campus, you can always have a wee look inside. What we're walking through right now, the grass here, you might notice is beautifully green. Um, I believe there is a conspiracy happening. Um, ever since my first year, I was constantly told, do not step on this grass because this grass is cursed. And if you step on it, you will not actually graduate, you know, like you will fail one of your classes or something. Um, what I believe is happening is that um, one of the ground maintenance people came up with that conspiracy just to keep people off the grass so that, you know, they wouldn't ruin the grass for them. But just in case, you know, just don't step on it. If you're planning on graduating, it might be better just to stay away. What you're seeing here um, straight ahead are two statues. So we've got the English lion and the Scottish unicorn. 
Um, yes, you heard that right. Um, if you're not from Scotland, you might not be aware that our national animal is actually the unicorn and, and also the haggis. We do not have a statue of the haggis. Luckily, we do have this lovely unicorn. Um, so, you know, it's a bit more interesting than the English lion, at least. Uh, but yeah, this is our national animal here in Scotland. So as you can hear, you know, like we've been around here for a long time and all of these little quirks um, are around, are to be found all around. So it's a lovely campus and you will always find these little things um, around, you know, and you will find your little spots where you'd like to study, where you'd like to hang out with your friends. We're going to actually walk through one of the little spots um, on, during one of our tours and show you. It's uh, the secret gardens. So we're just curling around the chapel here and popping out on Elphinstone Lawn, which is really where majority of things happen when you're at university. If you've ever visited us for an open day, uh, you will be quite familiar with this part. Um, the Elphinstone Hall is just ahead, um, below the arches. Um, the arches, again, are very Harry Potter-ish, so great for pictures. And this lawn here is called Elphinstone Lawn. During graduations, you might find a marquee there. Um, we also often have, during our open days, we have societies performing on the lawn or having a barbecue. But also, if you're a student, you will have the opportunity to attend events on the lawn. For example, Live on the Lawn, which is like a little festival style event that we hold on campus to celebrate just, you know, us being here as students, it's fantastic. The Elphinstone Hall that I mentioned um, is another location for your wedding uh, planning and um, if you want to keep track of that. We're also in the Elphinstone Hall we also have our open days and uh, graduations as well. Graduations are lovely in there because it's just a grand uh, arched room um, with a lot of different flags hanging everywhere um, and also during the first few weeks of term the info hub uh, team move into there to make it easier for students to collect their cards um, collect their lanyards you know because we all get really nice lanyards um, and all of all of those you know formalities all of this paperwork so we're going to move a little bit further ahead and i'm going to talk about the new, new, sorry, New King's Building next. New King's Building is just to my right here. Um, it looks deceptively old. It actually is not nearly as old as the other buildings around here. It was built at the beginning of the 20th century and uh, it houses again a lot of different lecture theatres. Um, so you will again find yourself there quite a lot. Um, there are rumors that it used to be um, halls for girls um, originally, but I really do not believe that due to the fact that the windows are so big. There's also a wee statue of a fella lying down and he's got a half-eaten apple in his hand. I believe he's called oh, the, the, the youth with apple, I think is the very apt name for the statue of a young man with an apple. So. He often gets dressed up for the holidays, you know, he gets a hat, um, he gets um, a mask sometimes, you know, so he um, always dresses up for the occasion. Right, what we're going to do now is we're going to pop down Regent Walk um, to have a look at that side of the campus. Right, and then we're going to come back here and I'm going to talk to you about Taylor Building. Um, societies and sports are sort of the thing that I would like to talk to you now about. Uh, we're going to be heading to King's Pitches, which is a big sports area. We also have our Aberdeen Sports Village just across the street, pretty much where you see the red lights. If you can see them, the Sports Village is right there. So if you are a person who's interested in sports, you definitely will get a lot of a lot of opportunities to get involved um, and you will also actually get a discounted membership and um, so it's half price for students for the sports village and it's great value because you get access to the pool you get access to the gym you get access to the classes uh, like Zumba and kickbox and all of those sort of classes and it's only about 25 pounds a month I believe so it's quite cheap and you get quite a lot um, and it's 
right across the campus so you know all of my friends who were actually into sports um, or just liked you know being fit and healthy and um, they would sometimes you know go to a lecture um, and then have a two hour gap between lectures so they just popped into the sports village for an hour to swim and um, so it's a lovely sort of break as well for you and it opens very early and shuts very late so you know there's plenty of uh, flexibility and also if you do want to get involved in an actual sport um, we've got plenty of opportunities so what you can see here are the king's pitches and you can see that's mainly used for rugby but it's also used for uh there were i don't know what it's called but it's like people in sumo suits you know wrestling um it was used for that as well um, people just walk their dogs around here. You can hang out here during the summer. You know, it's a lovely space and the sports village is just behind there. So very close. Um, and also, as you can see the red lights there, that's pretty much the end of the campus. So the campus is very self-contained and it's very, um, you know, all compact together. So you never have to worry about, you know, like, oh, I only have, 10 minutes between classes uh, you will get across the whole campus in just five or six minutes it will take me a bit longer just because i'm yabbing on but um you know it is a quick campus to get across so you don't have to worry about you know buying a bus ticket to get to the other side of the town you're it's all right here and we also have some lovely businesses on campus as well so you don't even need to you know leave the campus to have food you can just have food straight here the building behind me here is Regent Building. Uh, again, it's a sort of mixed use building, which you can, you will often be placed in for your lectures, but it's also the home to the English language classes um, for people doing processional English languages. Right. Speaking about languages, um, I will also mention the fact that if you would like to pick up a new language while you're at university that's very easy to do and you know it's totally up to you if you decide you want to pick up arabic you've never done arabic before that's perfectly fine you can actually you know start from nothing or if you've done a little bit of spanish you want to continue you just take a placement test and they place you into the appropriate level and you can continue doing the language so it's a really nice way of you know expanding your skills seeing something new and uh, doing something new so that's during the first two years you really can just like branch out and do pretty much whatever you want you know just to really explore what you are after at university and we're coming up to taylor building taylor is house is is the home of several different areas so when i say it's the home of those areas it's not really necessarily that if you're a language student, you will always be there. It's just where your lectures have their um, offices. So you will mostly just be dropping off your, you know, assignments there. Uh, but yeah, so that's Taylor. We will start from there. That's the home of the languages. So Spanish, German, French departments, and then our Arabic. Um, we also teach, we also teach some other languages. Yep, that you can do. And then across the little bridge there, that's the English department. So if you're interested in English language or creative writing, that would be where your lectures would sit. And then the rest of the building is the law department. Our law school is one of the biggest. Um, it's very, uh, it's extensive. There's a lot of different academics that focus on different subject areas. So if you are, uh, interested in one very specific area you might actually find a lecturer who actually teaches that at the university we also have we will have second of our three libraries coming up so this is the mid, mid exciting one mid-sized one as well it is the law library so the law library even though it actually you know it's named the law library it is not just for law students it does contain the majority of law texts However, as a politics student, I actually spent quite a lot of my time there as well because I was looking at, you know, different implications of different laws um, and interpretations. So, so, you know, it's not just for law students. Anyone can go there. And also um, some people preferred it because it's a bit more traditional um, and it's also apparently quite, quite a lot warmer. So if you are a person who gets particularly cold, the law 
library might be the space for you. It's also um, a bit quieter than the other library. So I know there were people who always went to the law library just to get away from the excitement of the main library. So what we're sort of behind here now, this is the back of New Kings. So we are right here in the thick of it. Um, and we're just walking through. All these buildings have been here for so long that they're just mashed together. Um, and we're coming up on one of my favorite buildings as well. This is Old Brewery over here. Um, fittingly, it is the home of the philosophy department and some of the English lecturers live there as well. Well, live, they sit there as well. Um, so yeah, um, I would not know why they placed them in the old brewery, but apparently it used to be a brewery at one point. So this all that you can see ahead is pretty much, that's all Taylor. So this is all the law departments all around me, behind me. Um, so as I said, it's quite extensive. And as a law student, we actually have the option that you can study both English and Scots law, which means that you would be able to practice in both England and the rest of the UK. Sorry, Scotland and the rest of the UK. Um, so that is something that you don't have to decide when you're applying. If you go to university to do law and it's just Scots law, you can always just ask to switch over. It's a very flexible degree. We're coming up here on the statue of the Armadillo. Um, I don't, I, there's an Armadillo here. So yeah, you can just enjoy the lovely um, sights around here. A lot of people also like to relax here as well because it's a bit of a sheltered area here so it's, it doesn't get as windy right we're gonna be coming up the stairs just watch your feet there we go um we're gonna be popping out back on the high street as i as we started you could sort of see that the high street was a quite a busy area i like to consider it like the artery running through the campus where you know you can see the beginning and the end of the campus from one spot um, there are also businesses and there are um, there are a lot of like there's a bar um, there's a bookshop there's a key store you know there's a lot of different things going on on high street righty so what you can see here is one of the best coffee shops in Aberdeen. Um, it is called Kilau and they do the best coffee well, from what I hear. Uh, we also have the bakery just over there who do the best lentil soup um, and I can attest to that. And there's always queues and it's always very popular. So it's lovely to have these spots on campus where you can just, you know, you don't have to go away from campus to get your food. You can get it from a nice local business right there. We're going to now head to the library. Uh, we're trying to avoid big crowds, so I'm just going to give it a wee second. While we're here as well, I'm going to point out up there, um, that's the townhouse, and that's pretty much the end of the campus. And if you look the other way, um, currently there's a bus standing there and there are also red lights. That's the beginning of the campus so the campus is really quite compact it is not a massive campus so we're gonna head to the library now and you might be thinking you know that this is all university it's actually not a lot of these houses are owned by locals you know who have lived here for decades and um, it's often rented out by academics but you know a lot of the people who live here are just regular people so that's nice as well you get a lot of character um, you get all these little alleys and you know you have life on campus even after five o'clock when lectures end so that's my favorite part of campus you know just the fact that you are not in like a sterile environment it is very much a living space um, and that's why we also really like to support our local businesses as well because we don't want the campus just to be, you know, one big space with just university buildings. Right, let's keep going. So what you might be already seeing is the library in the distance. Um, the pattern on the outside is quite distinct. 
and um, there are great debates about what the pattern is supposed to resemble. I will share some of the wilder ones with you. Right, it's getting a bit windy. Hopefully, you can't hear the wind howling too much. Right, so we popped out in front of the Sir Duncan Rice Library. The library was opened in 2012 by the Queen herself, who flew to Aberdeen to cut the ribbon. Um, the library has seven floors and each floor houses a different subject area. So for example, my area was the sixth floor where we had all of the politics books, but there is also, obviously you can still go to the other floors. You are not just confined to yours, but mine was the sixth floor. It also gets progressively quieter as you go up the floors. So on the first floor, you know, all goes. It's wild there. Um, it's loud there. You do your group work there. And then when you're on the seventh floor, it is dead quiet. So you can also choose sort of your, it's like choose your own adventure sort of thing. You know, you can choose your own high, like level of noise. Um, and it is quite distinct inside as well. There is a, actually each floor has a hole in it in the middle. So you can see if you, if you can look up the pictures of it, it's amazing inside. You can sort of see like a collection of holes going up the building and um, the outside as well. So some people say that it is supposed to resemble a bookshelf with books on it, which would be suitable, you know, be fitting considering it's a library. Um, but in fact, I was told that it's actually meant to resemble granite under microscope. You might have noticed that there's a lot of gray buildings or silver buildings and around here. That is because Aberdeen is known as the silver city or granite city. So we are well known for our granite worldwide. We have the second largest granite building in the world in Aberdeen. And this is sort of a nod to that, even though it's a brand new modern building, it's still, you know, honors our heritage in granite. So we're gonna keep walking down the street this is um, very much an actual working street, so let's not get run over. Um, but what you could, if you could, but you can't, uh, see if you had x-ray vision through the building over there, you could see our new science building, which is being built and is opening soon. Um, and that will house all the latest tech, um, all the latest labs and collab spaces. It will be very exciting once it's open. You also see um, the Meston building, which is where chemistry is housed and geology, I believe as well, are based. And um, there's also the Fraser Noble building, which is where math, uh, physics and similar um, and engineering are based. So. The thing is, though, that even though I say this is where chemistry is based, again, it doesn't mean that you will be just there the whole time. You will actually spend a lot of your day commuting back and forth between different buildings. And Meston especially is well known for being an absolute maze. Um, they like to place first year students in Meston for their classes as a sort of endurance test. And if you make it through without crying, if you find your class without crying, you know, you can make it, you can do the four years easily if you can find a classroom in Meston. Some people say it resembles um, Harry Potter and the Tri Wizard Tournament and the third task should have been finding your classroom in Meston. Yeah, it's very confusing, but people are really nice and everyone will always help you. You know, I've been there. I gotten lost and looked for a class for about three hours but you know found it in the end uh, but that's one of the charming things about Aberdeen you know you just it's just there's some buildings that just don't make sense because they're so old you know um, so that's lovely but you know and um, as we're walking down as well I will tell you more about accommodation so our accommodation is actually all based slightly off campus but it's all in one big village we call it the um, Hillhead Student Village. What that means is that you're with 2,000 other people um, in a big group of buildings and there's a wide variety of different rooms that you can choose from. You can choose from catered 
and non-catered, self-catered. Um, there's ensuite, there's shared bathrooms to fit all budgets. So you can just choose whatever you like. And there's a central building as well, where you will have a lot of different events happening. You will have, um, there's a big communal kitchen. The communal kitchen is great because you can do a lot of uh, cooking together. For example, I know the Spanish society, they often get together and you know cook in that big communal kitchen, which is fantastic. Um, they also have like yoga Sundays, there's donut Mondays, I think, or donut Tuesdays. So that is to follow after your yoga exercise. Um, so there's a great community spirit in living in Hillhead. And it's only about 15 minutes walk from here. However, there's also a bus that runs through um, the campus. So if you're a medical student, um, you wouldn't be based on this campus. You would be based on our medical campus um, in Forester Hill. And there's a bus that runs from Hillhead to this campus to Forester Hill. And it's free for all students and all staff. So if you just show the bus driver your student card, you can get on and, you know, go for free it's a free service um i unfortunately only found out about it in my third year so i spent the first year commuting back and forth even in the rain um just on foot um uh, but you now know that it exists and you can indeed make the most of it so what we will now be coming up on is the king's college again we will be coming straight back to where we started so I hope you get a sense of how small the campus actually is. Wherever you are, you are just five, six minutes walk from the other end of campus, pretty much. You can get lost. <laughs> it is a bit confusing because of all those little paths, because the campus is so historic. But that's what we love about it. And um, people who come on campus for our open days always say, you know, the students are so friendly. And I think it's because you know, we're um, quite far up in Scotland, um, so it's not always the warmest place, like temperature wise, but the people are so lovely and they will just accept you straight away. Um, they will show you where everything is. You know, they will happily take you around. I can't even name the amount of times that people have invited me over for dinner, you know, just to just just people that I worked with, for example. Um, and that's another thing I will mention. If you need to work part time, to make up uh, for your student loan or something like that, it's very easy to get a job in Aberdeen. You can either work for the university as a student ambassador, or you can actually work in town. There's plenty of restaurants, there's plenty of uh, retail places where you can work as well. So what's behind me is Elphinstone Hall and Elphinstone Lawn. And students have just finished their classes, so you can see it's a little bit livelier here right now. But this is where we started. Um, and this is King's College. I hope that you had a lovely time and keep an eye out for our further tours. And let us know if you have any questions. You can always email us at study at abdn.ac.uk. And we will be happy to give you any information about studying at the university. Thank you.